so much energy and mine is like a chess game so please forgive me for the lack of enthusiasm but with all of your blessings I would like to speak something to purify my tongue and my consciousness and glorify Sri Jagannath In our very beloved Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the king of all scriptures, Nigama Kalpataror Galitam Phalam, Shukha Mukhad Amrita Dravasam Yutam, Pivata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam, Muhuraho Rasika Bhubi Bhavuka. This Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam is the most juicy, ripened mango fruit on the tree of the Vedas. All the Vedic knowledge is considered to be like a wish-fulfilling tree. Hmm? Why wish-fulfilling tree? You stand under a kalpa briksha, a wish-fulfilling tree, and you make a wish, a kalpa, kalpana. And that tree will fulfill whatever you want. Huh? So if you stand under the Vedas, which means you go to the Vedas and you say, I want a long life. The Vedas will say, you do this yatnya by which kala sarpa dosh will be taken away. <laughs> You do this yatnya by which you will have a son. You do this yatnya by which you can even become Indra. You do this yatnya by which you will have the power. Akashanatva, Mohanatva power by which you can influence others. The Vedas give all this path. So whatever desire we have, the Vedas like a wish fulfilling tree, they will fulfill. But if you go and ask the Vedas, the tree, I don't have any desire. I don't want to ask a fruit. You give me what you want to give me. The other way. Instead of going to a wish fulfilling tree and making a wish and the tree giving it to us, if we go to the tree of the Vedas and say, I don't want anything, you give me whatever you have. That's best for me. Then the tree called as the Vedas will drop a mango fruit called a Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Why? Because other things only extend our living in this world. And Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us don't live here. Find Krishna and live with him there. So in that Srimad Bhagavatam, the king of all scriptures, Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki in the third canto, Lord Brahma is creating this universe. Hmm? As we know, Mahavishnu is the main creator, the primary creator, Karana Udakashai Vishnu. And Brahmaji is the secondary creator. It is described when Brahmaji is creating this world. Kshud trit tridhatu birima muhurarthyamana shito shnavat varshayri tare tarascha kama agnina chutarusha chasudurbharena sampashyato mana urukrama siddhate me. Brahmaji started crying. Siddhate. He started lamenting. Now you will say Brahma's position is so glorious. He is the father of all that exists. Why should he cry? Brahmaji started crying, Oh Narayana, Oh Mahavishnu, what service have you given me? You have told me to create this world, but what is this world full of? Huh? The living entities that I am creating in this world, Brahma started crying. They want food three times a day. They get hungry. And between meals, they get thirsty. And after the meal, they feel sleepy. So they sleep, hunger and thirst constantly tormenting their body. Then he says, my story is not done, O Mahavishnu. And what about the world that they live in? Sometimes they are tormented by heat, the summer afternoon. Or sometimes they are tormented by the winter nights. And sometimes they are tormented by natural calamities. Hurricanes, tsunamis, cyclones, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. And Itare Tarashtra, he said, how much can I say? Etc, etc, etc. All of these calamities. And then when Vishnu went to give a solution, Brahma said, I'm not finished, one more. And in the heart of such living entities, Kama, Grina, Chutarusha, Chasudur Bharena. In the heart, they are burning with the forest fire of anger. They are burning with lust. They are burning with pride when they achieve something. When they don't achieve something and others achieve something, they are burning with envy. When they achieve, then they are burning with greed. They are constantly burning. Oh dear Lord, Brahma prayed with tears. What service have you given me? You tell me to create this world where every living being is crying. They are crying because of hunger. They are crying because of thirst. They are crying because of sleep, not getting it or getting too much of it. <laughs> so much work to be done. And outside this problem, natural calamities. And inside the heart, this problem. So which means their stomach is burning, their throat is burning, their heart is burning, their mind is burning, their whole environment is burning. And now to flavor this whole recipe, there's problems in relations. There's rumors, there's misunderstanding, there's miscommunication. What kind of world have you given me? Sampashyato, my Lord, when I see this world, mana urukrama siddhate me, I am crying with all my heart. My Lord, do you really want me to create this world? How many of us understood Brahma's predicament? How many of us feel this is an honest expression of compassion? We ourselves, in the microscopic level, we understand. And think about the mac macroscopic level. Everyone's suffering. Brahma asked Mahavishnu, is there any way out of this? You have told me to create a world where living entities are just being tossed in the fire of repeated karma. One life after another, after another, after another. And they don't take the blame of their own karma. They blame it on someone else. And now it gets into cross nets and networks of misunderstandings. Families, countries, castes, communities, misunderstandings. My Lord, is there a way out? Is there any place in this whole creation where I can go, where living beings in this creation can go, where they can find peace of mind? Is it possible? When he was crying like this, it is described in the Skanda Puran. The Supreme Lord manifested on the back of Garuda. And he came to Brahmaji and he said, Oh Lord Brahma, don't worry. 
There's one place in this whole creation. It's in the middle planetary system on Mother Earth. And that place is so beautiful. Anyone who goes there and has darshan of my form, I promise, I guarantee it, O Brahma, they will never take rebirth in this material world again. I give you this word. Brahma said, I need to go first. Yad yad acharati sreshtas. Mahajano yena gata sapanta. I am the father and the guru of Narada. I am the first guru of the Brahma Matva Gaudiya Sampradaya. I am your child. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my guru. I need to help myself. Doctor, heal thyself first. Charity starts from home. home. Charity must be given at home first. <laughs> Begins at home. So he said, let me, let me first search this place. Mahavishnu said, the name of this place is Purushottam Kshetra. It is also called as Nilachala Dham. This is the place where I reside as Nilamatha with my eternal consort called Lakshmi. And O oh Brahma, please go to this place and have darshan of my form. You will feel at peace. Brahmaji very quickly on a swan carrier, very quickly he came to Nilachala Dham, Shri Kshetra, Shankar Kshetra, Purushottam Kshetra, Shri Jagannath Puri Dham. What we call as Jagannath Puri today is the same as Shankar Kshetra. You can see geographically Jagannath Puri, if you see from a top view, is in the shape of a conch shell. Therefore, it's called Shankar Kshetra. Kshetra means place. It is also called as Shri Kshetra because it is the place of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> this is the place where in Kali Yuga Krishna in the mood of Radharani, in the complexion of Radharani, as Shachi Nandan Gaurahari will come and spend half of his manifest pastimes. Out of 48 years, Mahaprabhu gave 24 years post sannyas in one place called Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. So anyone who goes there, Mahavishnu said, will get liberated. There are series of verses. Actually, some of those verses are also quoted by Srila Sanatana Goswami in Hari Bhakti Vilas on the glories of Shankar Kshetra, Jagannath Puri Dham. Brahmaji goes to this place. And as he comes, it's described, he finds this very beautiful kund called as Rohini Kund. And there he finds an astonishing factor. He sees an abominable crow, which he thought was abominable as far as his creation structure is concerned, dip and drink some water from Rohini Kund. And as soon as it touches water from Rohini Kund in Jagannath Puri Dham, the crow drops its body and comes out as a four-handed Mahavishnu associate. And as an associate of Mahavishnu goes back to the eternal abode, Brahma said, wow, this is the place I want to be in. <laughs> if a crow can become a Vishnu Duta, this is the place. As Brahma was happy, having darshan of Nila Madhav and Lakshmi Devi, and praying to them, there was one person who had a very big problem with this transformation, crow to Vishnu Duta transformation, and that was Yamaraj. <laughs> Yamaraj came and told Lakshmi Devi, what is this? When Brahma had a problem in his service of creation, Mahavishnu appeared and said, come here, gave a solution. Now I have a problem in my seva. My service is to punish those who are sinful. If crows who eat trash from a dustbin can just touch the water of Rohini Kund and become an associate of Vishnu, why should I even do my service? Every sinful person can come to Jagannath Puri and will go back home back to God and then why do you even need me? Lakshmi appeared before Yamaraj and said what you said is correct. You have no power here. This place of Jagannath Puri, there's only one master and that's Neela Madhav. Lakshmi Devi said, oh Yamaraj, I want to tell you something fascinating. If you look from my vision on Jagannath Puri, he said every ant has four hands. What to speak of human beings? Every living entity who lives in Jagannath Puri is an eternal associate and has four hands as an associate of Mahavishnu. Oh Yamaraj, please note, this land is so powerful. Anyone who speaks anything here, anything, gets the benefit of chanting the four Vedas. Then what more for those who chant our names, Lakshmi said. You can say anything you want in Jagannath Puri and you get the benefit of chanting the four Vedas. Sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Lakshmi said, Oh Yamaraj, 
Anyone who just takes one step in Jagannath Puri gets the benefit of circumambulating Mother Earth seven times. Yamaraj is gulping surprises one after another because there's no other place that he has witnessed such a miraculous presence of power. Another place where he saw was the pastime of Ajamil, where the Yamadutas were also surprised. What happened? Lakshmi continued. She said, this land is so powerful, O Yamaraj. If someone just goes to sleep on their back, with their back laying onto the floor, they will get the benefit of contemplative samadhi of Satya Yuga just by sleeping in Jagannath Puri. Yamarat said, is there anything more? <laughs> Lakshmi said, yes, and this is very shocking. She said, even if someone eats fish in this land, they will get the benefit of eating Mahaprasad. But, however, <laughs> this is only for record purpose. Just to say what she said, not to be followed. It is like, for example, when it is said by laying down with our back in Jagannath Puri, you get the benefit of contemplative samadhi. That doesn't mean go to Jagannath Puri and lay down on your back. <laughs> it means kimutaha, kaimuti. If a child can get Krishna, then what can be said of that person who's chanting? That's the comparison. Which means if by eating fish, one gets the benefit of eating prasadam, then what do they get by honoring prasadam? That's the inference. When it is said in Brahma Samhita, Katha Ganam Natyam Gamanam Apivamshi Priya Sakhi, every step in Vrindavan is dance. And every word is a song. Then what does that mean? It means if every step is dance, what is the dancing like? And if every word is a song, then what is the singing like? And if this is the dancing and singing, then what is the Rasa Leela of Radha and Krishna? That is the inference of Brahmaji. When he says every step is dance and every word is a song, he is actually glorifying Radha and Krishna's dance. Because you don't directly say things. Samajdar ko ishara kapi. As the saying goes. Those who are intelligent, just by the hint, they will understand. Lakshmi continued glorifying Shri Kshetra, Purushottam Kshetra, Chamka Kshetra, Jagannath Puridham. And Yamarat said, Oh dear Goddess, Ishanam Jagatosya Venkatapate Vishnu Param Prayasim Tadvakshasthala Nitya Vasarasikam Takshanti Samvardhinim Padma Lankrita Pani Pallava Yugam Padma Asana Samshriyam Vatsalyadi Gunojvalam Bhagavati Vande Jagan Mataram O Lakshmi, you are the ultimate personification of Vatsalya, of motherly affection. Please tell me, is there any bhakti, any anga of devotion that I can perform in this land? Yamaraj is asking. So Lakshmi said, of course. Lakshmi Devi said, long, long time ago, Markandeya Rishi, who had the blessing of living thousands and thousands of years, when the time of dissolution came, annihilation came, everyone was destroyed except Markandeya Rishi. Even now in South India, when someone turns 60, it is a celebration where everyone prays that may you live as long as Markandeya. <laughs> Which means may you live, live forever. That's wonderful during the daytime of Brahma when people are around. But during the nighttime of Brahma when there's only dissolution, Markandeya Rishi was struggling. He was being tossed and turned by the waves of annihilation. Markandeya Rishi was praying, my Lord, do I have any help? And at that time, he saw this very beautiful place called as Sri Kshetra, Shankar Kshetra, Jagannath Puri Dham, floating like an island amidst total dissolution. Markandeya Rishi saw, what is this effulgent piece of tract of land? My Lord, what is this? Please reveal in my heart. There he saw, in that tract of land, on a banyan tree, the beautiful, wonderful form of baby Gopa. Karara vinde na padara vindam, mukhara vinde vinivesayantam, vatasya patrasya puteshayanam, balam mukundam, manasas marami. This is what Markandeya saw. He, how many of us have seen this very famous painting of baby Gopal on a banyan leaf with the lotus of his palm touching the lotus of his feet and the lotus of his feet in the lotus of his mouth? You all waited for me to finish the sentence. <laughs> We've all seen that. 
So Markande Rishi saw this and he was praying to Gopal. And Gopal looked at him and smiled. And in one inhalation, sucked Markande Muni into his body. Now inside the body of Gopal, Markande Rishi saw such a small boy, such a big universe. What Mother Yashoda saw in the mouth, Markande saw in the stomach. Because what's in the mouth of a baby goes in the stomach anyway. <laughs> so Markande saw in the body of Mahavishnu, the 14, in the body of Krishna, 14 planetary systems. He saw the islands, he saw the oceans, he saw the mountains, he saw the cosmic creation. And as he was convinced, my Lord, what a wonderful divine display of opulence. <laughs> Very quickly. By the exhalation of the Lord, Markande was thrown back into the water and he was praying. My Lord, you're my only shelter. Let me just meditate on this form. And for all times to come, Markande Muni with his eyes closed was just meditating on this form. His meditation was so captivating that Lord Shiva appeared there. Haribo! Shankara Bhagavad Ki! Lord Shiva came with Uma, his eternal consort, and said, Oh, Markandeya, look, being happy by your meditation on Bal Gopal, I have come. But Markandeya was so absorbed, hair standing on end, voice choking, tears coming from his eyes. He was praying. And here is Lord Shiva in front of him. He wouldn't even open his eyes to see Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva said, I think I need to do what Krishna did to him. <laughs> Take the person in through the breath. So Krishna took Markandeya through the breath, Lord Shiva now became as thin as air and entered through the breath of Markandeya and went into the heart of Markandeya Muni. As Markandeya Muni was meditating on the lotus of his heart, he saw Lord Shiva with Uma, Mother Parvati, giving darshan. Markandeya Muni saw Lord Shiva and he opened his eyes and what he saw in his heart was right in front of him. Lord Shiva said, Oh Markandeya, I am so pleased by your devotion. You were all alone without Vaishnava association. You were all alone, splished and splashed in this water of dissolution, and you still medi meditated on the Lord and performed bhakti. Ask for a benediction and I will give you. Markande Muni said, Mama Janmani Janmani Ishware Bhavata Bhaktira Aitukhi Tvai. Prabhutava Pada Yuge Murani Veda. I don't ask for joy of this body, enjoyment through the body. I don't beg for more erudition and scholarship. I don't beg for money. I don't beg for followers. I just want Mama Janmani Janmani Ishware Bhavata Bhakti Rahai I just want Bhakti. I don't want anything else. Oh Lord Shiva, please bless me that the form of Bal Gopal Sada me manasya virastam ki manye. Let Krishna rise in my heart. Lord Shiva became so pleased. He manifested a form of a linga and said, Oh Markandeya, this is my gift for you. Lakshmi Devi said this whole story to Brahma and Yamaraj. Is everyone in the story, by the way? Haribo. Haribo. Everyone there at Rohini Kund in the conversation of Lakshmi and Yamaraj? Haribo. Much louder, Haribo, please. Haribo. Lakshmi Devi said this whole story about Markandeya and said, Oh Brahma, Oh Yamaraj, this place is so powerful, Jagannath Puri Dham, that even Markandeya Rishi, who lives forever, finds solace in this place. Then Yamaraj said, Oh dear Lakshmi Devi, can I have a Shivalinga too? I also want to worship Shambhu Mahadev. So Lakshmi manifested a Shivalinga for him. And even now in Jagannath Puri, 
there is a Markandeshwar Mahadev, the deity that was worshipped by Markandeya Muni. And there's a Yameshwar Mahadev, Lord Shiva deity worshipped by Yamaraj. Shambhu Bhagavan Ki! Now this whole story as it's continuing, as they offered their obeisances to Lakshmi Devi, Lakshmi Devi told Yamaraj. So Yamaraj, the conclusion of the story is, please never think of delivering anyone here. Don't think of karmic cycle for anyone here, because those who live here in Jagannath Puri, no karma for them. They are our inner uh, relatives of this home of Jagannath Puri. They're all liberated. And Brahma, as far as you are concerned, inspire everyone to come to this place. Those who come to this place of Jagannath Puri and as Darshan of Neela Madhav, they will escape repeated birth and death. And then Lakshmi said, very soon, O Brahma, Neela Madhav and myself, we will disappear. And you, O Brahma, you have to help King Indratyumna. What's the name of the king? <laughs> Saying this, Lakshmi disappeared. Now this whole narration is in the Skanda Puram. Sages are listening to this story. Jayamani Rishi is speaking. And the sages ask Jayamani Rishi, wait a minute, did you say King Indratyumna? Jayamani Rishi said, yes, King Indratyumna. The sages said, Aage kaho ar. We want to hear more. Huh? Ye dil mange more. So all these material quotations also have a transcendental origin in the spiritual world. Greed for hearing Krishna Katha. So the sages said, Oh, Jayamani Rishi, we want to know more about King Indratyumna. And in the Skanda Puran, this narration continues, where Jayamani Rishi speaks about the glories of King Indratyumna. He mentions, King Indratyumna was such a great king. He had everything materially. He had sons, he had a healthy body, he was equipped with abilities and capabilities and facilities. He had good followers and subjects, no crime in his kingdom, lot of money, army was powerful, everything was perfect. But there was some vacancy in the heart of King Indradyumna. King Indradyumna got a big assembly of sages and he said, Bhavat Vida Bhagavata Tirtha Bhuta Swayam Vibho Tirthi Kurvanti Tirthani Swantas Dena Gadavrata. Great personalities like all of you, O sages, you should help me. I have a vacancy in my heart. So all the sages asked King Indradyumna. They asked King? Indradyumna. They asked King Indradyumna, what is that vacancy in your heart? King Indradyumna said, I have everything material. My desire is. I want to have darshan of that place, which is the highest place in the whole material creation. Is there any place, O oh sages, in this whole creation where the rules of maya don't work? Is there any place where karma doesn't work? Is there any place where the Supreme Lord lives in full potency? And as he was asking these questions, one sage put his hand up and he said, Actually, O oh king, there is a place called as Purushottam Kshetra, which is Shri Kshetra, which is Shankar Kshetra, which we call as Jagannath Puri. The sage said, when I was a child, I asked the same question, and I was taken to that place. It is called Purushottam Kshetra, because that is the land where Purushottam, the Supreme Lord, lives in full potency as Neela Madhava. Neela Madhava Bhagavan Ki! King Indratyumna said, wait, this is what I'm looking for. Is that the best place in the whole creation? The sage said, yes. The king said, where is it? How is it? How can I go there? How can I take everyone there? How can we have darshan? The sage said, don't worry. I will take you there. I will give you directions and you can go. The sage said, the direction is just pray to Krishna and he will guide you. <laughs> you know, directions don't work like that. <laughs> Imagine if you don't know to go to a place if, without putting the GPS, if you just say, Krishna, please inspire me. <laughs> then, samsara chakre brahmato swakarma bihi. We will keep moving around. <laughs> so the king said, how do I find this place? He called his chief minister. He told his chief minister, I'm looking for Neela Madhav in Purushottam Kshetra. I want to go and take darshan of this deity. The chief minister said, wait a minute. Neela Madhav is the name? I need to ask my brother because he's gone to most places. The chief minister spoke to his brother. He was a very wonderful scholar by the name Vidyapati. His name was Vidyapati. 
as his name goes, he was this scholar of many sciences. He knew everything. He told the king, being the brother of the chief minister, you don't worry. I will go first and see where this Utkal is, where this Kri Khetra is, where this Neela Madhav is. Once I go there, I will come and tell you, O king. King Indra empowered Vidyapati. Vidyapati went searching, cutting through thick forests and dense provinces. He got lost. In an attempt to find Neel Madhav in Neelachal Dham, he got lost himself. There he heard the sound, the talks of a tribal community by the name the Shravaras. The head of the Shravaras by the name Vishwavasu, he welcomed Vidyapati. And he said, oh Vidyapati, whom are you searching for? Vidyapati said, well my king, King Indra Dhyumna has given me a task. And the task is to find Neela Madhava and in the land of Neelachala. The Shravara king, Vishwavasu said, can I tell you a secret? Vidyapati said, go for it. Vishwavasu said, we are in Neelachal Dham. And I know Neel Madhav. Vidyapati said, can I see him? Vishwavasu said, according to the Skanda Puran, Vishwavasu said, yes, please. But there are other parallel stories in Jagannath Puri which say he actually was very hesitant. Because in their forefather dynasty, there was a foretelling that in the future there will be a king who will come and take Neelamadha with him. So as soon as Vishwavasu heard that Vidyapati was the brother of the chief minister of the king, King Indra Dhyumna, according to the Skanda Puran, he was very happy. And he said, come, I'll take you to Neela Madhav. And very quickly, he took him to Neela Madhav and Lakshmi Devi and Vidyapati with eyes completely dilated like the eyes of Jagannath. He was having darshan of Neela Madhav and drinking the beauty of Neela Madhav and Lakshmi through the pots of his eyes. Vishwavasu even put the garland of Neela Madhav around Vidyapati's neck. Then he called him home, gave, fed, fed him prasadam. And as he was feeding him prasadam, here was Vidyapati honoring prasadam and said, I have never tasted such prasadam. I live in the kingdom of the king and still we don't have dishes like this. Where does all this come from? Vishwavasu said, from the spiritual world. <laughs> this is the taste of the Adharamrita, the lips of Neelamadha. And do you know, O Vidyapati, demigods come in human forms every day to honor this prasad. Because even in Swarga, you don't find it. He said, sometimes Indra comes. Sometimes Agni comes. Sometimes even Brahma comes. And they honor prasadam here. The prasadam of Neelamadha is transported from the spiritual world. With the taste of the prasadam of Neela Madhav on the tongue. With the garland of Neela Madhav around his chest. With the joy of glancing on the form of Neela Madhav, here was Vidyapati intoxicated. He came back to King Indra Dhyumna and he said, I have seen it! I went to the place, I saw Neela Madhav, oh dear king, how can I explain? King Indra Dhyumna welcomed him with an arati. You have seen God, yes I have seen God. Generally, the Arati is performed for the king, but here the king was performing Arati. Bhakta i Bhakta Janam Priya. Those, already time to open the curtains? Okay. <laughs> so, what should I do for you? I should carry on? Okay. Okay. Chitra Vira Prabhu was hinting to me. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. All right. So at this point, Neela Madhav is ready to give darshan to all the Vidyapati and Vishwavasu here. <laughs> so when he came back and he told King Indra Dhyumna, King Indra Dhyumna was so fascinated. He embraced Vidyapati and he said, you found Neela Chaldham and you found Neela Madhav and will you take me there? Vidyapati said, of course I will take you there. Actually, I even befriended the tribe who takes care of Neela Madhav. So I have some connection. The Jagannath Puri Pandas, I have some connection with the Pandas. Huh? So I can give you close darshan, close to the Rath. Huh? So please come. At that point, as King Indra Dhyumna was getting ready to go to Neelachal Dham, Narada Muni, 
Singing the glories of Lakshmi and Nila Madhav of Nilachal Dham, there came Narada Muni. And he told King Indradyumna, where are you all set to go? King Indradyumna said, please join us. We are all going to take darshan of Nila Madhav in Nilachal Dham. Oh, Narada Muni, please come. Narada Muni said, okay. Yatra registrations have opened. Okay, I will come. Jagannath Puri this year. No problem, I will come. <laughs> Narada Muni also registered for the yatra. And he was ready to go with King Indradyumna. <laughs> and as he was proceeding, it's described. He was speaking constant Harikatha on the way. In a book called as Prema Vivartha by Jagadananda Pandit, Jagadananda Pandit writes, there are only two things we should beg Krishna for in this world. Please chant. Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha. Krishna Naam. Krishna Naam. Hey Matra Chai. Hey Matra Chai. Oh my Lord, my cha, my desire is only twofold. Let me get the association of pure Vaishnavas and let me hear Hari Katha and chant the holy name with them. Us. Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. So here is Narada Muni leading the Yatra. And he's speaking Harikatha. What can be higher? King Indradyumna is intoxicated with the desire, Akshan Matam Palamidam Naparam Vidama, with the desire to see the form of the Lord. Jivve Kirta Yakeshavam Muranipo Cheto Bhaja Sridharam Pani Dvandva Samarcha Yachuta Kata Shrotra Dvayam Tvam Shuru Krishnam Lokaya Lochana Dvaye Hare Kachangri Yugmalayam Chikra Grana Mukunda Pada Tulasi Murdhan Namadokshajam. King Kulashekara says, the bhajan for the eyes is to glance at the deity and pure Vaishnavas. The bhajan for the tongue is to sing the holy name. The bhajan for the ear is to hear Harikatha from the lips of a pure Vaishnava. The bhajan for the hand is to, uh, arms is to uh, mandira marjanada, to clean the temple. The bhajan for the body is to serve and the bhajan for the heart is to surrender. And King Indradyumna was doing all of this with Narada Muni. As they were traveling towards Nilachala Dham, they entered Utkala Kshetra. The king of Utkal came out and he said, King Indra Dyumna Ki! King Indra Dyumna Ki! King Indra Dyumna Ki! Maharaj Indra Dyumna Pada Rahe! He made announcement that King Indra Dyumna is coming. And as king of a small province, this king offered obeisances and King Indra Dhyumna patted him on the back and said, Sab kushal mangal hai? Everything auspicious? He said, I wish I could say yes. But there was a big cyclone. Everything is destroyed. My kingdom is gone for a toss. And the thunderbolt on my heart, the news is, O oh, King Indra Dhyumna, Nila Madhav has disappeared. The deity of Lakshmi and Nila Madhav has disappeared. And they will not be seen again. King Indra Dhyumna's heart dropped. He said, what? Vidyapati, sir. And he came back and he told me and the whole army, we are the whole kingdom, we're all going to have Darshan of Nila Madhavan, oh, king of Utkal, you're saying he's disappeared. What will I do? He fainted. Narada Muni held him and said, why fear when I am here? <laughs> you want Darshan? Don't try to see God but act in such a way that God wants to see you. Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. <laughs> Don't try to see Krishna. When Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur was speaking Harikatha, one disciple got up. And in the middle of Harikatha, he got up and he went and took darshan of the deities and he came back. And Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur asked him, did you see Krishna? He said, yes, sir, deity, I, I saw. Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur said, how was your eye exercise? <laughs> he didn't understand. Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur said, I am giving you Krishna here through Harikatha and you want to exercise the opening and closing of your eyelids and go and see Krishna on your own? How can you see? If it was Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj, he would have gone one step ahead. Are you blind, Baba? <laughs> Why you cannot see? <laughs> Except that you are blind. <laughs> Srila Gorgovind Maharaj ki! <laughs> See, it wasn't planned. But when you speak about Jagannath, names of pure Vaishnavas, devotees of Jagannath must come out. 
When you speak about Ram, how can you forget Hanuman? Huh? So all these great Vaishnavas, even Srila Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj, books on Jagannath, so wonderful. So many communities are speaking about Jagannath now because of Maharaj's books. <laughs> Maharaj was also first in touch with Srila Gorgavita Maharaj. <laughs> he told, go and take shelter of Srila Jayapadaka Maharaj. That's how Maharaj came. So, Narada Muni told King Indra Dhyumna, don't worry. Naham vasami vaikunthe, yogi naam rida yeshuva, yatra gayanti mad bhakta, tatra tishthami narada. Hari sada vase tatra, yatra bhagavata jana, gayanti bhakti bhavena, hare nama eva kevala. You just sing and chant the holy name, Krishna will appear. You don't have to go there, Krishna will come here. King Indra Dhyumna said, really? Not when he said, of course. Nila Madha will reappear. And he gave so many instances from Shastra where Krishna appeared. If he can come from a pillar for Prahlad, if he can come for Draupadi, these are examples, not Narada Muni, but we are discussing. If Krishna can come for Draupadi, if Krishna can come for Prahlad Maharaj, if Krishna can come for Gajendra, why won't Krishna come for King Indra Dhyumna, who is so eager to see Krishna? What is the price to see Krishna? Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. Kiyatam yadi kutopi labhyate, tatra laulyam api mulyam ekalam koti janma sukriti na labhyate. Ramananda Rai said, the only price to pay to see Krishna is greed, excessive eagerness to see him. So Narada Muni said, why are you worrying? You just intensify your devotion and Nilamada will appear, don't worry. Let's continue, we may see him on the way. So when Narada Muni said that, King Indra found so much solace, he said, okay, let's go. There must be hope, because the words of pure Vaishnavas never go false, right? Prabhupada in 1966, 1965 comes and gives a report. I have 108 temples. Thousands and thousands of devotees are chanting Hare Krishna. Now if you see at that point, no 108 temples. No thousands and thousands of devotees chanting Hare Krishna. No thousands and thousands of books translated in multiple languages. But Prabhupada said it. Why? Because he's Swatantra. Krishna is Paratantra. Krishna is Adheen. Pure Vaishnava will make a statement. Now Krishna's duty is to make that fulfill true. <laughs> Conditioned souls, Krishna will make a statement and they have to follow. Pure Vaishnavas, they will make a statement and Krishna must fulfill. <laughs> so Prabhupada made a statement. Now who will fulfill? Krishna will take care. That's Krishna's headache. To make proclamation is Prabhupada's statement. How to make that come true is Krishna's headache. And then Krishna did his duty. <laughs> So in this way, Narad Muni gave his foretelling and King Indra Dhyumna continued to walk. And as they continued, dear devotees, it is described, they entered Bhubaneshwar. Now we're coming so close to Jagannath Puri. Bhubaneshwar Dhamaki. They entered Bhubaneshwar. King Indra Dhyumna said, Oh Narad Muni, what is the greatness of this land? And Narad Muni continued. Narad Muni said, Actually, this is the land of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is everywhere, dear devotees. You cannot perform bhakti of Krishna without Lord Shiva. In Brihad Bhagavatam Rita Sanatan Goswami Pad has gone on to say that by worshipping Lord Shiva, one will get Krishna Bhakti. He has said like that. <laughs> this is not to say that Lord Shiva is Bhagavan and on power with Krishna. That's not what we are saying. But Sanatan Goswami as a pure Vaishnava, he understands that you can't neglect the position or Ignore the position of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is very close to the Lord in all incarnations. He appears in this world as in Gauralila, what incarnation? Sri Advaita Acharya comes, that is Lord Shiva. And when Lord Shiva in the form of Advaita Acharya calls, then Sri Shachinandan Gaurhari manifests. Then Lord Shiva comes in Treta Yuga as Hanumanji. How much love he has for Ram, he is ready to set his tail on fire and perform Arati of Ramachandra with his tail. Now we come for mini Arati, to perform mini Arati here, we are all so excited. But if we were told, we have to perform Arati with that lamp on our palm, we will say, Theek hai. let others get chance. I already, I already performed last time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, O Radha, O Krishna, please engage in him in your service. <laughs> Let him offer Arati, mini Arati. I have offered so many times. Aap aage, pehle aap. Sometimes even to carry the lamp, 
After the arati with five flames going, it's very difficult because the whole lamp gets hot. Think about Hanuman, his whole tail is on fire. And he's thinking, I always offer arati with a ghee lamp, now I can offer arati with my tail. And he sets the whole Lanka ablaze, performing seva to Sri Ramachandra. So this is the position of Lord Shiva. Narad Muni explains, O oh dear King Indra Dhyunam, when Lord Shiva married Sati, Sati was such a great opulent princess. And here is Lord Shiva, his whole body smeared with ashes, snakes slithering on his neck, a crescent moon on his head, matted dreadlocks in the form of hair, a trident in his hand, three eyes on his forehead, the third eye on his forehead, and not to forget, a garland of skulls. And associates, ghosts and goblins, Pishacha, Bhuta, and where he lives? In a crematorium. So Sati's family, they were really mad. Oh, Sati, you could have made a better choice. What is this? Whom did you marry? He sits under a tree and he's just chanting the names and crying. What kind of husband is this? Please note, there is no devotee as great as Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva said, oh dear Sati, your parents have a problem that you got married to me and they think I don't have anything. Just by my imagination, I will create a city. Ganga Taranga Ramaniya Jata Kalapam Varanasi Purapatim Bhaja Vishwanatham. He appeared through the thought of his mind. He manifested the whole city of Kashi. Kashi Nath Shankar Bhagavan Ki. He manifested the whole city of Kashi. Lived there for some time. And then told Sati, I think this is not as much fun as living in Kailas. Let's go back to Kailas. So they went back to Kailas. But what did the Lord do to Kashi? He gave it to a king by the name Kashina, Kashi Raj, because he was the king of Kashi. Now this Kashi Raj had a friend by the name Poundraka. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto, Poundraka is a very controversial personality. Poundraka was the imitator Vishnu, imitator Krishna. He would write letters to Krishna saying that, I am the actual Krishna, you're the fake one. I am the one, I am the God, the actual controller. You are just a normal human being. In fact, in the letter he even said, the Sudarshan Chakra that you hold in your hand is actually mine. <laughs> Krishna said, really take it. <laughs> Krishna left the Sudarshan Chakra, the Sudarshan Chakra came blazing and <laughs> laser surgery performed. Poundraka's head fell flat to the ground. And now the Sudarshan Chakra said, Poundraka's friends, please come over. And it was Kashiraj. Now Kashiraj started running for his life. The Sudarshan Chakra <laughs> cut the head of Kashiraj. The head of Kashiraj came flying into Kashi. The whole of Kashi was celebrating. Look, Poundraka and Kashiraj have killed Krishna. This is Krishna's head coming cold. It's not Krishna's head, it's the head of our king Kashiraj. What to do? Kashiraj's son, Sudakshina, he said, I will take revenge for my father's death. He took on Krishna. But how did he do that? He prayed to Lord Shiva. He said, you are Kashinath, I want you on my side. Lord Shiva, he's Ashutosh, he's very dear to his devotees. He said, oh dear Kashiraj, that's the son, the second, Kashiraj, the second, the junior. Seems like the Buckingham Palace, huh? like the royal number one and number two. This is the junior Kashiraj. Lord Shiva said, you are such a dear devotee of mine. You're taking on this war. I will take on your side and I will take on Krishna. No problem. Because he's Bhaktavatsal. He was his heart, Lord Shiva's heart was melting to see <laughs> the situation of the city of Kashi. Now. When the war was fought with many details as ghosts and tantric uh, pishacha being invoked too, it is described when the war was fought. At the end of the war, Lord Shiva came to Krishna and said, my Lord, I'm sorry. Krishna said, why, what happened? Lord Shiva said, I took sides with my devotee, forgetting that I am the devotee of my master. I took on you just for my devotee, please forgive me. Krishna said, what kind of devotee are you that you're taking on me in a war? Lord Shiva said, please forgive me. Please give me any punishment that you want. 
Krishna said, I won't give you any punishment. I will actually give you a benediction. May you always be close to me. In all the dhams that I live in, you should be closest to me. So that you will never fight me, but you will be on my side. <laughs> Narad Muni said, because the Supreme Lord manifests Nila Madhav in Nilachal Dham, he kept Bhuvaneshwar Mahadev Lord Shiva here in Bhuvaneshwar, very close to him. Bhuvaneshwar Mahadev Shankar Bhagavan Ki! <laughs> now as they continued, Lord Shiva of Bhuvaneshwar appeared and said, O King Indratyumna, if you, by the way, if all of you have been awake till now, awake and alive, we are in the last five minutes of this very wonderful, suspense-filled, bumpy ride. <laughs> last five minutes. Lord Shiva of Bhuvaneshwar, he appears before, Lord Sh before King Indratyumna and he says, it's like a treasure hunt. You're searching for Neela Madhav, but before Neela Madhav, I have a task for you. The task is, there's a deity of Nashinga close by. Lord Shiva is saying, there's a deity of Nashinga close by. I want you to build a temple for him. By his blessings, you will have Darshan of Neela Madhav. King Indra said, okay. He built a deity of Nashinga there. Now Nashinga appeared before him and said, the second secret in this treasure hunt, I want you to perform, Nashinga said, I want you to perform thousand Ashwamedha Yajnas. And if you do that, Neela Madhav will be pleased with you. It's not easy. You can have Narad Muni by your side, but as Prabhupada said, we ha all have to fly our own airplane at the end of the day. We can get instructions on bhakti, but we have to fly our own plane at the end of the day. <laughs> King Indra performed 999 Ashwamedha Yajnas. No. Just want to go. Now you may think, don't tell us that he couldn't complete the thousandth. <laughs> at the end of 999, King Indra in his dream, he finds Mahavishnu in Vaikuntha smiling at him with Lakshmi Devi and Ananta Shesh. And the dream breaks. King Indra wakes up and asks Narada Muni, what does this dream mean? Narada Muni said, it means the Lord is pleased with you and is going to appear before you giving darshan. At this point, King Indra experiences something astonishing. His left hand, his left eye, all start twitching, which in Vedic system is considered to be inauspicious. So King Indra Dhyumna asks Narad Muni, why is this twitching? Why is my left arm and my left eye twitching? Narad Muni said, well, because there's a bad news that Neela Madhav has disappeared and he will never appear again. King Indra Dhyumna said, you knew this? Narad Muni said, yes. <laughs> King Indra Dhyumna said, you knew this all this while? Narad Muni said, yes. <laughs> King Indra Dhyumna said, then why did you even come in this procession with us? <laughs> Narad Muni said, well, why do you worry? We all need to have some patience. Yes, he has disappeared, but Vishnu appeared in your dream and gave you darshan. So he will appear in another form, don't worry. As the thousandth Ashwamedha Yajna was completed, People from all directions came running to King Indra They appeared on the scene and told King Indra Dhyumna, there's intoxicating fragrance coming from the ocean. We want you to come and see what's there in the ocean. There's something astonishing there. King Indra Dhyumna, with all the citizens of his kingdom, with all the people around, with Narada Muni, with all the demigods, they all come to that ocean shore. And there they find this very big fragrant block of a transcendental wood piece from a sacred tree floating on the surface. It was very effulgent and fragrant. Narad Muni said, O oh, King Indra do you see that block of wood there? That floating tree right there has the signs and symbols of Vishnu on it. The Shankar, the Chakra, the Gada, the Padma, all the four weapons in the, in the palms of Mahavishnu are all imprinted on that piece of wood. O King Indra Dhyumna, that is Neela Madhav reincarnated as Daru Brahman. As the block of wood, who is none different from Neela Madhav. King Indra Dhyumna was ecstatic. He told Narada Muni, what did he is it today? And Narada Muni said, today is Snan Yatra.
Today is the day, said Narada Muni, where the Lord has appeared as a block of wood. He has appeared as Daru Brahman. He has bathed himself floating on the surface of the ocean. And this is the Yatra on the waves of the ocean by taking snan. He is bathing and performing this Yatra and appearing to his devotees. Oh dear King Indratumna, this form of the Lord needs to be carved by Vishwakarma, who will carve in 15 days the form of the Lord. Vishwakarma, who is the architect of heaven, in complete isolation, in complete seclusion for 15 days, without sleeping, without eating, without drinking, without talking, without being interrupted, he was chiseling, he was carving, he was manifesting the most beautiful, wonderfully complete forms of Jagannath Baldev and Subhadra, made out of wood. And as he was manifesting this, King Indra Dhyumna's excitement and eagerness was bursting like a bubble with his wife, Gundicha Devi. The name that we often say Gundicha Marjan, Gundicha Mandir, Gundicha Cleaning. Who is that Gundicha after all? She is the wife of King Indradyumna. So King Indradyumna and Queen Gundisha, both of them, Raja Mahishi, 15 days, 16 days, 17 days, 20 days passed, and this Vishwakarma is still behind closed doors. There's no sound coming. Then now King Indradyumna felt, is he even alive? He hasn't eaten or drunk anything in 15 days. He just opened the door, and there he saw. Vishwakarma said, I told you no interruption. Now that you've interrupted, no more chiseling and no more carving. I am leaving. And here is King Indra crying because he sees forms like this with apparently no feet and no hand and no eyelids and no hair and no ears. What is this? He started telling Narada Muni, I am such a fallen soul. Neil Madhav preferred to leave before giving me darshan. And he appeared in the form of this wood, Daru Brahman. Daru, by the way, doesn't mean alcohol. <laughs> one time when I was speaking this one devotee, very, he took me to the side and he said, Sab kuch to theek hai, Prabhuji, ye daru, daru kyon bol rahe <laughs> I said, Daru doesn't, it's not Daru as in alcohol. Daru means wood. And Brahman means the Supreme Lord who is manifested in the form of wood. You can see in the Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, Krishna while speaking to Uddhav, he said, DT can be made in the mind, or out of mud, or out of stone, or out of wood. And he refers to his own form as Jagannath. Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad calls Jagannath by a name. Huh? What is that name? He says, your name is Gutika Udara. Gutiko Udara. Please everyone say, Gutiko Udara. In this book called Sri Krishna Leela Stava, he calls Jagannath by the name Gutiko Udara. Gutika in Sanskrit means a small ball and Udara means belly. This small ball is a Shaligram Shila in the belly of Jagannath. And the Praman for that is Sanatan Goswami. So Jagannath Dev, his form apparently seemed to be incomplete. Narad Muni came and told King Indradyumna, why you worry when I am, why worry when I am here? Why fear when I am here? Don't worry. I've always helped you, I'll help you again. And Narad Muni said, these are the complete manifestations of the form. There is nothing more complete than this. King Indradumna asked, but what about the form? Narad Muni said, in Shastra there's always a debate whether the Lord is personal or impersonal. He said, this form, he bridges the gap between these two societies. Because he apparently seems to be formless, but he's the most complete personification of God. So the formless and the formed featured devotees both love Jagannath. <laughs> Jagannath Swami Ki! <laughs> Narada Muni said, Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra are non different from Krishna, Balaram, and Subhadra. And these forms are because of Mahabhav Prakash. It is a manifestation of great ecstasy. Krishna in Vrindavan plays the flute, but when he's in Dwaraka, he's crying and weeping. Radhe, 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 Jai, 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 Sri Radhe.
Satyabhama said, don't lie. Even during the day, he says, Radhe, Radhe, Gopi. <laughs> when Krishna in Dwaraka remembers Radharani and the Gopis and Nanda and Yashoda and Sridham and Sudham and Vasudham and Kinkini and all the friends and the cows and the calves, just the thought of them brings a smile on his face. And the desire to see them blossoms like dilated eyelids or eyeballs. And he wants to see them without eyelids. Because the gopis of Vrindavan, they prayed. Oh Brahma, what kind of creator are you? You have created eyelids where we cannot see Krishna. So what did Krishna do? In this form as Jagannath, he being installed by Brahma himself, who is the creator, he said this time, no eyelids please. <laughs> because my gopis don't like eyelids. Pakshmakrit Drisham. The word Pakshmakrit means to create eyelids. But in Sanskrit, Krit also means to cut. So Krishna said, Paksma Krit Drisham. This time cut my eyelids so that I can see the Brajbasis 24 hours a day with a big smile on my face. And when they come in front of me, my arms are outstretched to embrace each one of them. Yeah. Then, where are the lotus feet of Jagannath? Oh, the gopis in Vrindavan, they said, Oh Krishna, Chalasi Yad Braja, Charayan Pashun, Nalina Sundaram Natha Padam. Krishna, when you walk behind cows every morning, so many stones are hurting your feet. We wish we can cover you with our palms so that you can walk on our palms and you won't get hurt. Krishna said, no worry. Reciprocating to that desire in this form of Jagannath, I will not display my lotus feet. I will not display my eyelids. I will not display my lotus feet. Narad Muni explained like this and then told King Indra Lakshmi had told Brahma to help you install Jagannath. So Brahmaji installed Jagannath Baldev and Subhadra in Jagannath Puri with the first Arati and it was Maharaj Indra Dhyumna who along with his family, they installed the worship there. It's so wonderful. Gopis, they criticize Brahma as the creator. And now that same Brahma was again used in the service of Krishna in separation from the Gopis. And when this cycle was complete, Radharani as Mahaprabhu comes and glorifies Brahma as Haridas Thakur. Because now Jagannath is complete, without eyelids. And gives Brahma the name Namacharya and also dances with him after he departs. This Jagannath is the heartbeat of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, dear devotees. Radharani in separation from Krishna is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Krishna in separation from Radharani is Jagannath. And in Kali Yuga, Radharani in separation from Krishna as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming eye to eye in front of Krishna in separation from Radharani as Jagannath. Dear devotees, this is Jagannath Ratiyadra Ki! And this is the gift of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu to the whole world. Srila Prabhupada following in the footsteps right from childhood as baby Abhay Charan. He started the Ratyatra. And he would even go and get some collections for prasadam. And he would get some extra kachoris and put it in his pocket. <laughs> Therefore, Prabhupada was called Kachori Nandu. Kachori because he loved Kachori and Nandu because he was born on Nandotsa. So he would distribute a few kachoris but also make sure his pockets were always full. <laughs> and this same Srila Prabhupada when he grew up in San Francisco, he got the first ever Ratyatra in the Western world. And he renamed San Francisco as New Jagannath Puri Dhamaki. The temple official said, you cannot take Jagannath out of Jagannath Puri. Srila Prabhupada said, I will take him for a world tour. <laughs> he is not Odiyanath, he is Jagannath. Jagannath means the Lord of the Universe. And that service of taking him for a world tour is mine. British tried to stop the Ratyatra because of stampede in Jagannath Puri. They couldn't. Prabhupada started Ratyatra in London. <laughs> British couldn't stop it in Jagannath Puri. Prabhupada took that Ratyatra straight up to Britain. 
and flooded the whole world with the glory of Jagannath. So today, on the Snan Yatra day, uh, it also starts the occasion of Anavasar. Anavasar means for now two weeks up to Rath Yatra, Jagannath will not give darshan. It's not the avsar for taking darshan. Behind the curtain, Pujaris will even hear Jagannath sneeze. <laughs> so everyone is expected to pray now intensely like King Indra Dhyumna, so that we see Jagannath on the chariot very soon for our annual Ratyatra festival. Jagannath Swami Ki! Yeah! 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 Yeah!